In this video, we're going to introduce physical chemistry. This will serve as an introduction to physical chemistry as a field in general, and is the first video in a series that's going to cover chemical thermodynamics. Now, since chemical thermodynamics is typically the first part of a two semester course that I offer in physical chemistry, um, this, I'm gonna take the time to introduce physical chemistry as a field um, in general before we talk more specifically about what is thermodynamics. So physical chemistry is often abbreviated as PCHEM. Right? We always usually abbreviate physical chemistry as PCHEM, right? And what goes into uh, physical chemistry, right? It's, it's two words, you can break it down, physical chemistry, right? You know there's gonna be some chemistry in there, of course, and some physics, right? So we, we have the first piece of physical chemistry is of course the chemistry and the chemistry at play here is every question that we're going to be asking in this course will be chemical in nature at this point you're familiar with the definition of chemistry as the study of matter i like to always say it's the study of matter and the transformations that matter can undergo right um, so in this class, it's not just enough to be able to classify matter, right? If we have, um, you know, a bowl of water, right? Or we have a, a sample of water, right? It's, it's not enough to just know that it's water and be able to classify it as water. What happens when it boils? What happens when it freezes? How do those processes occur? When we dissolve some solid into water and it becomes a solution, how does that process happen? How do the bonds change on a molecular level, right? These are the questions that are all chemical in nature, and they're based around the transformation of matter, right? Uh, so obviously there's going to be some chemistry there, right? This is what you signed up for. Um, and the other piece, in order to drive those questions that we're asking, we're going to need to have some sort of understanding of physics in order to answer these questions in some sort of explicit way right we're going to have to have an understanding of energy right especially the, the the physics that deals with energy and forces interacting are very crucial to answering these questions in chemistry right when something um, dissolves in a sol in a solution right how are those different molecules interacting how does that affect whether it dissolves or not right um you know, when phase changes occur, what are the energy differences of of something freezing versus something boiling? Right. These these are all going to be chemical questions in nature, but we're going to need physics in order to drive the answers um, in order to arrive at answers and drive our questions, um, the, the answers to our chemical questions. Right. So so all of the questions that we're going to be asking are going to be chemical in nature, but they're going to be driven by physics. And uh, the last piece here, which is kind of why I think physical chemistry unfairly gets its reputation as one of the hardest courses in the chemistry sequence, um, is that we're going to do a lot of math, right? If, if physics drives the chemistry, math drives the physics, right? You, you can't really um, solve any problems in physics if you don't have the mathematics to express uh, the physics, right? So, you know, if you're if you're trying to figure out, you know, and it, it, take, take any simple physics question, right? A block sliding down an incline, you're going to, you know, the physics is identifying which forces are at play. Is there a frictional force? Which angle is it sliding at? But then after that, the math takes over, right? You you build up equations and you start to be able to um, to 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 frame this problem in a mathematical sense. And that's exactly what we're going to do here, right? So you wanna think about these three fields working in tandem to form physical chemistry, right? We have some chemical problem that we're interested in, say some sort of phase change, right? Uh, we're going to describe the problem in a physical nature using physics, right? Just describing energy changes, um, using thermodynamic potentials or something like that, right? All of those energies and, and the physics that we're going to describe are going to be driven by mathematical equations, right? And it's not just going to be some elementary math, right? We're going to get very comfortable with doing calculus here, right? Being able to solve integrals to, to you know, solve the problems that we need. We might have to set up an integral. We might have set up a differential equation, right? These are things that 
um, at this point, you know, but I want you to not be afraid of being able to use those tools that you know, that you've heard of, that you're familiar with to be able to drive the physics and answer the chemical questions that we have in mind here, right? Now, I have this figure on the right hand side and I love this figure um, and, and this in no way is meant to, you know, to put any field above the other. Right. But what this does is it, it says it's an IMCD comic and it arranges the fields by purity. Right. So the ones on the left are deemed less pure and the ones on the right are deemed more pure, right? So on the far left, right, we've got this sociologist here, right, by, by her lonesome, right? And then a physicist walks up behind that sociologist and says, well, sociology is just applied psychology. Biologist comes up behind a psychologist and says, yeah, psychology is just applied biology. The chemist, we come up and say, ah, but biology is just applied chemistry. And then the physicist comes up behind us and says, well, that's just applied physics. And then the physicist is really proud of this. He says, oh, it's nice to be on top. But then the mathematician is way over there saying, oh, hey, I didn't see you guys all the way over there. Right. Just basically claiming that math is the, you know, pure topic. Now, this this word purity is going to be loaded here, but basically just meaning free of empiricism, free of guesses or anything, you know, that you might get from experiment that you wouldn't know the basis of. Right. But and so math is completely free of that. And it really doesn't start to get introduced until physics. We introduce a little bit more. Biologists introduce a little bit more and so on and so on. So the way that the reason why I bring this up is that I like to think of physical chemistry as putting this purity back into chemistry, right? Putting a little bit of that purity back into chemistry, a lot of that underlying physics and mathematics into chemistry, right? So we're, we're addressing chemical questions, but we're using the purity of physics and mathematics um, in order to do it. Now, if you're a double major in physics or math or something, don't, don't come at me over this purity thing. It's, it's, just a, it's just a comic, but, you know, I think it does describe uh, quite accurately, you know, how these fields um, are either, you know, in, include or are free of empiricism. Okay, so what is what fields make up physical chemistry, right? So physical chemistry has a bunch of different subfields in it, each of which um, employ their own um, necessary branches of physics and answer very unique questions um, in different ways. Now, the one that we're going to spend the most time talking or what this semester is going to be based on is thermodynamics, right? So that's one of the branches of physical chemistry is chemical thermodynamics. Now, chemical thermodynamics deals all with energy transfer, right? You're familiar with, you might be familiar with the three laws of thermodynamics at this point. We're going to talk about all three of those laws in detail. All of them center around some sort of uh, restrictions on energy transfer. And that's what we're going to spend this entire semester talking about, right? Um, looking at, you know, what happens when a gas expands or contracts? What's the energy difference, right? How do we, are, how are we able to calculate the changes in volume, the changes in pressure? Um, when we have a phase change, what's the change in energy, right? We'll define free energy in a very explicit context and use it extensively. This is all what thermodynamics centers around. Right. And now my favorite branch of physical chemistry, not that I don't like thermodynamics, but my favorite branch is quantum chemistry. So um, this is and I'll say quantum mechanics, sticking with the, the physics name for it. Right. So quantum mechanics is another branch of physical chemistry. Now, you might be thinking, whoa, 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 why do we need to know quantum mechanics? Well, um, think about it. Chemistry revolves around really, really small particles, electrons, right? If you're if you're coming off of a, a semester or a year of organic chemistry, you know that all of these organic reactions that are so important to the body or to um, material design are all based on the transfer of small pairs of electrons, right? These are very small particles that if we're going to have any sort of physics to describe these particles, it's going to be the have to be the physics of very small particles. And that's what quantum mechanics revolves around. It, it revolves around the Schrodinger equation um, for small particles and, and gives us a, a branch of physics that deals with small particles, right? So um, that's usually, or at least in, in this class, that's going to be a second semester of physical chemistry. 
Um, something that we'll talk about a little bit this semester is called statistical mechanics. Right now, what statistical mechanics is, um, is basically using a little bit of quantum mechanics, right? Um, just basically the energy levels and equations from quantum mechanics and using statistics to, uh, to, to basically describe some of the macro, um, macroscopic things that we see in thermodynamics, right? So um, just basically seeing every bulk uh, system as a collection of smaller microscopic systems and using statistics to average out their contributions to energy or changes in volume, things like that, right? That's what statistical mechanics centers around. And the last branch of physical chemistry that you should be familiar with is chemical kinetics. So kinetics, you're already a little bit familiar with from general chemistry. Um, you might have talked about it a little bit in organic as well. These are, you know, dealing with the speed of chemical reactions, things like rate laws, right? Um, activation energy. This is all dealing with chemical kinetics. How fast does a reaction occur and how can we speed it up, right? Catalysis. You'd be able to use a catalyst to speed up a chemical reaction. This is um, really the last big branch of physical chemistry. There are smaller sub branches that you could branch out here as well. This could become a big web, but these four fields are pretty much the, the hallmarks of physical chemistry, thermodynamics, quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics, and kinetics, right? So those are the four branches that you'll study. Like I said, this semester, uh, we're going to, or in this series of videos, this is going to primarily center around thermodynamics as the primary uh, field of study.